senator, while indoctrinated, could not explain his toxicity. You should not listen to men's rights advocates if you want to know what they have to say. Do we owe feminists an apology for talking about the way we anticipated that they would respond to International Men's Day? <laughs> no. International Women's Day sees probably the biggest flood of easily debunked male demonizing woozles like the wage gap myth and feminism's patriarchy, rape culture, and toxic masculinity narratives. Feminists who spend the day spouting this high-fiber baloney get really resentful over challenges to it. They respond with the demand that they should be allowed to use International Women's Day to publicly demonize men as deadbeats, abusers, and thugs with outright lies and those underhanded lies known as half-truths. Why? Because International Women's Day is supposed to be all about women. Well, no, not women, but feminism. They're not too keen on hearing from women who aren't feminists and don't buy into feminist narratives on that day, either. So given their demand that men, or at least non-feminist men who object to being demonized based on lies and chicanery, stay out of their holiday and their hashtag, of course feminists took a step back and let men's issues activists discuss men's issues without being demonized for it on International Men's Day, right? Don't be absurd. Some spent the day spouting the same easily debunked woozles and demonizing men. Some spent the day calling it an attack on feminists. Some spent the day trying to invalidate men's rights activism. And some spent the day denying that those other groups were doing what those other groups were doing, getting angry, and blocking anyone who dared to suggest that they were.
The day couldn't just be left for discussion of men's issues because if it had been, the focus would have been on all of the causes of male suicide. Not just vague statements about men's feelings, but discussion of the impact of parental alienation, the role of heavy-handed child support obligation in men's poverty and homelessness and how that leads to suicide, how trapping men in abusive relationships leads to suicide, the impact of female sexual violence on men and boys and how that leads to suicide, topics that don't really provide feminists with control over men's issues discussion, topics which, when discussed, would lead to the conclusion that legislative reform is needed. And it is badly needed. Custody law and court policy discriminate against fathers. Child support law and government policy discriminate against fathers. Intimate partner and sexual violence law and sexual misconduct policies discriminate against both accused men and male victims of female perpetrators. These are areas where feminists could easily, clearly demonstrate that they're telling the truth when they say their movement is about equality, but instead, they worked very hard to steer discussion away from these areas to talk about the importance of talking about men's feelings instead. Why? Because reform efforts would lead to dismantling feminist lobby laws and replacing them with gender-neutral versions which women couldn't manipulate as easily, from which feminist organizations could not make so much money, and for which feminists could not take credit. On International Men's Day, feminists demanding that it be acknowledged once and for all that feminism is not about hating men accidentally admitted a thing. They're right. It's not about hating men. Yes, their hatred for men is real, overt, and visceral. But it's also superficial. It really is not what feminism is all about. It's about control. And they're mad as hell that we're not giving it to them.